Welcome back to the 36th episode of Luxury Lunch and Learn. I'm really excited about today's guest. I get, I've been excited about every guest we've had, but uh, I'm a huge believer in staging homes, all price point homes, entry level homes, average priced homes, luxury homes to get them sold. And I have the creator of home staging and the founder of stagedhomes.com, Barb Schwartz with me today. Barb, how you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for being a guest. I'm really excited about having you on today. Uh, so first off, I mean, the creator of home staging, I mean, t talk to me a little bit about this and, and talk to me about when this occurred and how, how you discovered that the way you position a home and the way you present a home online, because most buyers and agents can't visualize, is vital to, to sell a home. So talk to me a little bit about what went into this. Okay, well, to me, it's a gift the universe brought to me. And I was on Broadway, off Broadway, when I was in college and afterwards for a little while. Not, not New York, but <laughs> places okay. like you know. And then I got into real estate and I have a degree in education and a degree in design and a degree in music because I was supposed to be Barbara Streisand. <laughs> I ended up Barb Shores. So anyway, I was uh, lifting houses, nothing was selling. And I thought, what the heck am I going to do? I'm either going to need to quit because people wouldn't listen to me or I have to change the way I work. And I think that all of us, when things aren't working, we need to look at us, not the client. Too many of us as agents and brokers, we're always blaming the client you've got your finger pointed the wrong way because you're not going to change them ever. And the only person you're going to change is you. And I've worked on this for many, many years. I've taught over a million, 300,000 people. I've been on the platform 39,000 hours teaching and that's been certified by accountants. Wow. If, there's any, <laughs> if there's anything I've done, I've observed human behavior and I would suggest things to the seller, but they wouldn't listen to me. And so I thought, I don't want to quit. I'm really excited about this. And one day in a place in Bellevue, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle, I said to this lady in this one level, three bedroom, one bath house. And when was this approximately, Barb? Like what year are we talking? 70s. Yeah, I was just going to say in the 70s. In the 70s. I was a young child, actually. <laughs> And I had been, I'd been staging houses for builders, but I didn't have a name for it when I was in high school because the houses looked horrible. They were vacant, they didn't sell. So I did that and didn't have a name as I said. So anyway, as I was with this lady, I said to her all of a sudden, and this is honest to God way it happened, Michael, do you like the theater? And she said, the theater? Well, I love the theater. What's that got to do with selling my house? And I said, you know, as I'm in the theater, and sometimes I am, and sometimes I'm not, depending on the role I've been picked for, and that is that we sit, change the set every different act. And so we want to modify and change that set so that it works for the audience for you know, what the rooms are like. So the scene we set in the, in the pretend house on stage, even in off Broadway or Broadway, if it's a bedroom, that's how you set it up. Mm -hmm. But you do it so that it really supports the play. So as I'm here with you, I'm thinking, you know, as your agent, I am your director. I really am. And you're the star because you live here. Oh, she loved that. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And then I said, and you know, we have these really tough critics. It's those agents out there because they'll come through and they'll smell something in, and then they'll name it the stinky house or the ugly, you know, master bath house or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and they're really the crit critics and the audience are the buyers. And so, you know, we want it to be a hit and with my knowledge and your kind understanding and knowing that you really want to sell your house, I'd like to make some suggestions of what to do. And it's not about you personally. 
It's about the product you have and the product is your home, which becomes a house because you're going to leave your home behind and take all the memories. But as it's on the market, it's a house. So we need to set the scene in the house just like we would in uh, the theater. And I have many sayings, Michael, I've developed through the years they are called Barb's sayings. I have 150 of them. Oh so yeah, 150 sayings. Yes, sir. Are, are those are those are those on stagehomes.com? Because I'm a huge uh, saying guy. I, I created these objection handling playing cards, Barb. You know, there's 52 cards in a deck. Yeah. I, have, I have I have different sayings. I call you know Lafitoisms, if you will. Uh, <laughs> and I know you have some, so I, I don't mean to interrupt. I, I'd love to hear more about your. Your, your various sayings, because one of them is just the definition of, of stage home, right? So that a buyer can visually and mentally move in the house, right? You're psychic. I was just getting ready to say that very one. That's amazing. So you are psychic. So <laughs> for example, buyers only know what they see, not the way it's going to be. And I parlayed that into agents only know what they see, not the way it's going to be. And then I move that into appraisers only know what they see, not the way it's going to be. Because whether it's a luxury property or, you know, a really low end home, agents are humans too. <laughs> and if the scene's not set, they're going to judge exactly what they see. And you and I see a lot of yucky stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. I've never heard you say that. Uh, only know what they see, not how it's going to be. That's, that's, yeah. a, that's my first... Uh, that's not the way it's going one. to be. Yeah, it's buyers only know what they see, not the way it's going to be. And all of these came from stories that, uh, real stories that happened when I was working with clients because I was in the business of being a broker for many years from the 70s uh, up to the 2000s. And then I started teaching what I was doing but, and speaking about it. But the, I really like quick sound bites, you must too, so that we can get the point across really fast. And I've worked with tons of high end people, very wealthy, from Kenny G to some of Bill Gates' properties. And, and you know, you, you don't want to talk as long as I'm talking here. So it's, sure. it, it's down and out. Simple, and, right? Like little simple, little like yeah, yeah. one liners, one sentence that, that, that helps them hammer like that hammers home the point so that they can understand it and grasp it absolutely and then they start repeating them to me i love it <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. so you know i guess probably should start with the background so we shared with the background but fast forward to today so you do a lot of these types of programs where you're teaching you're educating agents broker owners but you also have an association that you created uh, for professional stagers, correct? Yes, it's huge right now, and uh, I will continue doing that. I, I want to share with you, and thank you for your kindness to bring that up, is that I started uh, speaking nationally and internationally in 1985, and that's where the 39,000 hours of teaching has come up all the way up to where we are now. And three years ago, I sold my school of stagehomes.com, Michael. And so the, the uh, non-compete on that was not to teach until uh, the end of next May. However, I speak and I feel very blessed that I've been speaking in Europe quite a bit and they really need me and all of us because they're going through what I went through when I invented home staging. And I say this with great humility. I just would like people to stop and think, anybody and everybody in real estate or out of real estate, that the word stage for real estate never existed. And you know, someone said to me the other day, you created it? I said, yes. Well, I thought that person would be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm still here. The yeah. thing is that they assume now that it was always there. And so when I started my training in the business, there was no such thing. And I saw this huge void. And there's still agents, you know, and brokers that don't do it or have it done. And 
So as that happened, I, in the early 70s, 1972, when I was a baby, I um, worked on it, Michael, I'm very possessed and dedicated like you are, and I'm not saying you're possessed, but I am. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Driven, driven, right? And, and I worked on it for 13 years before I took it to other agents, 13 years. Hmm. I really believe in studying a communication of what the seller is saying, or what the buyer is saying, and then whatever I was saying, I fine tuned it, or I changed it, and I made it better and better. And 13 years is a long time. Yes, it and, is. You know, agents wouldn't listen to me now or then, just like in Europe, they won't listen to stagers or then Asians don't want a thing to do with it over there. And that's how it was here. Sweetheart, nobody wanted to listen to it. Oh, that'll never work. Besides, they'll like you better than me. Right, <laughs> right. Interesting. And yeah. so I just I just kept pursuing and I'm very that's the way I was made. Um yeah. very diligent and I won't give up. I'm like a laser beam. And so I call um, that stick to itiveness. Stick to itiveness. Oh, yeah, yeah stick to it in this. It's a great you're term they use it in athletics. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're you're right. You're in my office. It's staged. You see? No. Yeah, that's awesome. So, Everything. you know, like I, as I mentioned, we have different perspectives from the industry on this program, and and I'm so honored that you took time uh, to be on here because I'm a huge believer and, and I feel like real estate agents and buyers are terrible at visualizing. And I, I kid around and I basically tell people we're, we're basically in the, in the, in the dating app, we're in the Tinder industry. People swipe left or right on the listings that we represent and how agents position the homes they represent. And most agents either don't know what they don't know. So they don't know the importance of staging or they don't know how to articulate. And many agents, uh, Barbara, have, uh, have a very difficult time explaining to that homeowner that, you know, that I use the term, that pink wallpaper or those brass fixtures, or it smells like your pets, and, and they don't want to offend. So talk to me a little bit about what are some of the ways that you teach agents or you teach some of your stagers to build some rapport and, and address those elephants in the room without offending the homeowners. Yeah, I really, um, I'm really serious about what you just said. I really believe we need to honor the client and honor their possessions. And nobody's gonna make a friend with them if they insult them. And to come into the house and say, oh, it's really nice to meet you. Gosh, this is a gorgeous property. How many have 17,000 square feet? Oh, my Lord, what's over there? How many paintings do you have on that wall? Oh, really? Oh, it looks like an art museum. Oh, what about over here on the mantle? Did you win those trophies? Really? What? Oh, God? Wow. Well, you have to take all those down. I mean, <laughs> people don't care about those. Blinds. They might break them anyway. We do that, we're going to be out the front door with a foot in our uh -huh. bush. Yeah. And I, I've sold, like you, thousands and thousands of homes. And every one of them I have staged. And I don't believe we should um, engage in serving people and, and taking listings without policies. You know, doctors have policies, attorneys have policies, and I have policies too. And for me to really achieve for you what you really want, it's about being a team. And it's not about I, 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 or saying to them, you, you, you. You, you, you puts people on the defense. So I always talk about, us, us, us as a team. And, you know, I don't walk in and start hugging people and kissing on the cheeks. No. However, I want them to really like me. And when a seller says, please don't leave you. It's so great to have you here. Well, I got that. I got that right immediately. And so, it, yes, how we do this is really crucial. I believe in sharing our background. I have another thing. I've invented several things. And it's called the career book and it can be updated in any way and you don't show it, you leave it so that they can find out about you. And I believe in even taking it to their work before you see their house and they'll pass it around with the executives up on the president floor. I mean, it's amazing. I've gotten so much business. From it's that. called the career book. Yeah. I have the trademark on that. It's the, it's the, it's about what we do and how we've done it. It's not about, 
the company. It's about you because they want you, no matter where you live, work and live. I mean, I would, I would want you to list my property. I don't care what company you work for because mm -hmm. you're the man that makes it happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, we want to be with firms that are really good, have our own and do the same thing. It's just really important. And so what I really do, and I'm speaking about this because if I use the word teach, I don't want to say that because Zion competes not up till the end of May. Sure, but, sure. Uh, but speaking, I can do, and I'm very sensitive to all of this. So as going in, I'm talking about the sellers, going in with the sellers, everything we do is crucial. It's how we shake our hand, their hand. It, it, seriously, because you either crunch oh, it for, for like a Look them in the eye. I, I, I know. I talk about the basics. Shaking right. again with confidence, right? Confidence. Yeah. Look them in the eye. I teach yeah. my, my boys, you know, my 11 and 9-year-old boy, when they meet someone I introduce them to, nine out of 10 times that person says, wow, your, your boys have a good firm handshake because there's nothing worse than you know if an agent goes in there with like you said a dead fish handshake dead fish, that's it. <laughs> it's like it's like they got no confidence how are you going to get my home sold when you can't even look me in the eye and shake my hand firmly exactly and the opposite is are those that you know there's two things here i'll mention one with the woman of the home or whether an agent with me as a broker to just take hold of the end. It's like, men should never do that in real estate because the woman is thinking, he gives me no credibility. And that's true, you men, when you shake the woman's hand that's a seller as well as another agent. It's, it's, it's insulting, that's how they take it. So do we want a nice grip? The thing is, like you said, and I like to call it thumb to thumb. I had a seller that said to me, I really like you. I said, well, thank you. Yeah, you know why? Because you went thumb to thumb. You went all the way. <laughs> really? Yeah, he said that. And and so it's really good that men, whoever's listening and watching, you don't crunch their fingers to death. You know, I just stand on my toes going, nice to meet you, because you're about to faint from the squishing with the right. ring. Right. So anything matters. And how we look at them, where we stand, where do we sit at the table? And it's, I've, I've assessed all this, the, those 13 years I talked about, and I still do, and change anything that needs it. The part about Realtors that I think we really need to wake up, even this very day, is to become the ultimate observer of themselves. And whatever they do, what's the reaction that's happening? Because it's not them, it's you. And I'm not pointing at you, Michael. Sure, sure. I'm pointing at the others. Because what you do has this huge effect. They're either going to like you or they're not. They're going to trust you or they're not. They're going to give you the business or, or they're not. And it's really important that they feel that you care about them. And I was reading something on the internet last night on Facebook, and it was like, this agent said, well, you know, I did something I haven't done before, but I just sent a proposal by email and I haven't met him. And then uh, in the future, I think I'll just, you know, send him emails on how the showings go. And at the end, I think I will never even meet him. And I, I'm thinking to myself, you know, you're being a robot because as long as they're in the same community, those relationships can stab you in the back or they can bring you a ton of business. Uh -huh. I feel I know because that's how you get Microsoft Business and IBM and all the others is by they know that you are nice, you're courteous, that they feel that you care, everything you said, looking in the eye, all of that. And that's really tough to do by sending an email. It really yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great point. And we've talked a lot, of, we've had various guests on, you know, in today's Zoom technology with so many meetings based on COVID-19. Uh, so building rapport, building trust before you have those, those conversations. Uh, I like you talked about us, us. So this is a team, you know, yep. so, and you talked about like agreements, like, you know, you can't, you know, you can't work for a certain company without having signed agreements, working on their terms, same thing. Uh, but, but having that open dialogue, um, is, is really important. So, so Barb, talk to me a little bit about visualization, you know, uh, most, real estate agents and most buyers are terrible at visualizing. Uh, so talk to me about 
what recommendations do you have? Oh, by the way, before I forget, I'm wearing my location, location, location ah. shirt. Um, and the reason I, I wore that specifically for you, because <laughs> most people think real estate is about location, 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 which it is. But correct me if I'm wrong, the location of the furniture within the room to set the scene is just as important as the type of furniture, correct? Right. And I, I do, I didn't forget what you asked me, dear heart, with, um, some ideas about their things yeah uh, so you don't insult them not yep. you, you but the general you so i'll address each of those uh i'd love to talk you know for uh three days but no <laughs> sure no you're fine <laughs> you turn me on it's kind of hard to turn me off because sure. i've been doing it so long. but uh first of all we don't want to insult them just like i said a little bit earlier so I have a habit and taught myself that when I go in to look at the property the first time, of course, we're taking notes, taking photographs, doing a video, whatever way that you work. I compliment what it is, Michael, that I later want them to put away. So I'm going through your property with you. <gasps> Michael, my gosh, how large is that painting? Really? 30 by 50? That, that's amazing. Oh, your brother painted that. Well, that, that, that really is, that's incredible, actually. Uh, people must really look at that a lot. Oh, they do. Yeah, they come in here, my friends. They're always looking at it and they call it names and everything. I totally understand. Yeah, that, that's really amazing. Because you want to seek to understand before you seek to be understood. And so let's say, you know, even in really wealthy homes with very high end luxury properties, this one gentleman had a duck room and he, he, always, he was very wealthy and he loved to shoot all these ducks and he, he stuffed every one of them. And in his den, that's what it was, stuffed ducks. So I made a big deal. Of, I mean, the place was gorgeous, but this is a stuffed duck room. So I made a big deal about which is your favorite duck, Michael, which is it? And I'm serious when I'm doing that. I want to know, because later I'm going to talk about that favorite duck. Oh, you name them, do you? Oh, wow. Well, which, you know, where do you shoot them? I mean, where do you go? And he said, I just shoot them in the ass. Well, <laughs> that knocks me over. And I'm like, man, what state or what city do you shoot them in? <laughs> and so anyway, later I talked about his ducks and, and um, because I don't do it that, that visit, I like to work in steps and visits because you don't go to the doctor either, Michael, and they say, lay down, I can tell you got heart disease. I'm just gonna open it up right now and take all the parts out. No, you go back and have them look at it again. You get tests, you get medications. And so it's the same way, building the report, I'm never afraid of leaving because I leave my book of credentials with them, which typically they're very humbly, very uh, impressed with. And I planted all the seeds and then I put together a killer report, I call it. I don't like the words listing presentation. It's, it's, it's like everybody makes listing presentations. Michael, I can't imagine you making a listing presentation. You're way off the charts compared to listing presentations. So I realize that sellers, because this is how I think about everything, I analyze and analyze, sellers make reports at work. They think they work hard. I'm sure they do. So when I say to them, I'm going to put an exclusive detailed report for you. And it's just not like a listing presentation. Look what they do with my face. That other people may do? No, I go way beyond that for you. Because with this gorgeous property you have, you deserve it and you're my employer and I really am looking forward to the pleasure of working together as a team and so I, I then as I'm going through remark on a couple others like the ducks okay now the steps are to see the property like the doctor would see you and then come back and I have my report just like the doctor has reports here's your tests Here's your x-rays, la da 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 da. And then it's, of course, to move ahead and, you know, do all the paperwork, which I like to call it paperwork. It's less, we're gonna do the contract. Scares the bejeebers out of some of them. 
And some of good the, point. You know, good point. So you talk about paperwork versus listing agreement. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, you would love me because I changed all these words and it gives me business every time. I mean, they're like, you're different. I mean, they really so a good different. So um, anyway, so as that's done, we're going to move then into setting the time to get it staged, which many times can be right after the paperwork or uh, you have a stager coming in and the appointment set and there's standards there and there are things the seller has to do and like cleaning the property before it's done and cleaning it again once it is staged, especially by a stager because then it could get all messed up too, as well as beautiful, you know, with debris and some stagers clean it up themselves and some don't and some bring in a cleaner. So as we're going, as we've done the paperwork, only then, only then, we're gonna go through the house. They and I, of course, because I probably created uh, home staging, they're counting on me telling them some things and, and bringing my team in to stage it. But the, any, any realtor heck, uh, should, a team of stagers that they bring in and as I walk through in this case with the seller to get them ready for the staging here we are back Michael in your living room oh Michael do you remember when I first met you Michael that was just yesterday it seems like you know a month like ago, a month ago. <laughs> yeah. and you know how I was so attracted to your painting I do, I do, yes. I really like it. I'm very sincere. It's really, it's really incredible. And by the way, I use that word incredible for really creepy things or great things. Okay. Like. <laughs> okay. Incredible. I'm writing that one down. Incredible can be great or not, and they don't know. <laughs> so, so, you know, because I see a Ferrari, that's incredible. Sure. So, sure. so, uh, I really, Michael, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. You said that friends like to stop by, and I'm sure you're a great host, I bet you are. And you said they always like to talk about it. But you know, Michael, I have a concern, and that is, should we, we, not you, because it puts them on the other end, should we leave it out? I'm concerned, Michael, the buyers are going to do the very same things that I did and that your friends do. And they're talking about the painting and buyers are going to do it too. And Michael, when they do it, they won't be buying your house because they're looking at the painting. Also, we have buyers that are five years old, six years old, and their parents want to bring them because they want Johnny to like the house too. And this is very true in high end. And so maybe mom and dad have gone into the kitchen. And all of a sudden, little Johnny, maybe he's five or six, he just reaches in pockets and pulls out a crayon. Mom and dad didn't know he had it. They're in there and loving the kitchen and everything. And he just can't help himself. He just gets up there and he starts to color. And I, I pretend I don't have a color. You could take it. I've done it before. And just hold but I never touch it and all of a sudden oh Michael I would just croak if that were to happen to you I would just feel horrible yeah and this side is out of mind and besides that you're going to take them with you you are going to aren't you well of course he is so that's how I do it with the ducks and all of the things yeah and I'll never forget the snow I just love to have fun because why not have fun if you're not having fun in the business get out same thing's true for Amen. Steve. Yeah, you got to have fun, you know? You got to have fun. And, and so and, I, I said to this, he told me the favorite duck. I'm sorry I get so excited. I'm just so thrilled to be on your program. Oh, really oh no, that's that's awesome. So I really like the fact that I like to use the word elephant in the room or the hotels.com, the, the Captain Obvious. So if there's something Captain Obvious or an elephant in the room or the ducks in the room, uh, you know, you, you compliment it. You address it. But yeah. in a complimentary way, you type, like to use the word incredible. You know, so that, that's incredible. Incredible could be both ways. Because that's one of the things that we talk about um, in 
in our in our designation is, is how you position these homes and and so most most agents don't do a good job of addressing the elephants in the room because they they're want afraid. the business they want the business they're afraid. Yeah. they're afraid they're afraid to step on toes they're afraid to speak up because they want the business which again we can all respect but i always tell a seller can i be you know direct with you after i built rapport like do you want right. an agent that's going to tell you what you want to hear or an agent that's going to help you get the home sold faster for more money yes so, true that's the honest to god truth and i even use doctors as analogies there when there's something i need to because uh, you know when i'm speaking i say to the group you know, you see everything that you can see and so do I. And yet so many realtors, brokers, agents don't tell them anything. Mm -hmm. So this, this, is what, this is what I will, even on the phone when I talk to a seller first, in my let me tell you how I work, that's a script I developed through the years. And that's one of my sayings, let me tell you how I work. And, um, and by not doing that, I say on the phone to them, I just shared with you the steps that we'll go through together. And I want to ask you something, even before I meet you. Do I have your permission to share with you, Michael, ahead of time, always the truth you deserve to know? Because there are people in the business. See, I set the scene by telling them the truth that will tell you what they think you want to hear as agents and brokers because they think you give them your business. Mm. Do you want to work with somebody that does that? Or do you want to work with someone that tells you the truth you deserve to know? I work entirely differently than any other realtor or stager you'd ever meet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your permission. Later in any part of the relationship, I can remind them, you know, I asked ahead of time and you were so kind to say, please tell me the truth. And what I'm sharing with you is the truth that you wanted to hear rather than telling you something just to get your business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, it, it really is powerful. All of these things to me, are the things I assessed in 13 years and came down with. So my goal is that I end any concern before they even think of it themselves. And the way I do that is sharing. I'm talking about a seller here. Anybody listening? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I say teach in this category, to t I teach the sellers. You know how important it is. I know. I believe in you. Is I do, Michael, because I know about you. And the thing is, we've got to educate them up front. And without it, we'll get stabbed in the back. And if you want to, not you, but if you all want to get rid of complaints and, you know, criticism and, oh, they're all upset and objections, well, it's you. You've got to change how you talk, whether it's staging or other ways. And then all of a sudden, they evaluate you at a higher level and they'll accept whatever, whatever you tell them and that's the truth from the people like well i don't want to change the purple carpet i just did it last year i can get that done oh are you kidding well i don't want to redo all the roads it's the way we do it it's the way we do it and i never forget i gotta take this quick part he said, yes please I, I went back with the, the duck room uh, this is like a 14 million dollar house the thing was huge and so i i said oh can we go back and look at your ducks and we went in and i said you know you told me this is your favorite one and I can see why. And I did the whole thing about, we want to protect them. And I know you're taking, oh yes, you're taking them with you. I did all of that. And so what we want to do is pack them up safely, la da da da, which he did. And as I said, and as I'm sharing this, he looks at me and he looks at the duck and he said, that's my favorite duck in the whole world. You sell my house, that is your present. I'm giving it to you so you can have it too. He was serious. It was like a big deal. Oh my so. goodness. That's great. You know, I sold a home. I, we called it the nickname for it was the taxidermist home. There were over a hundred uh, animals that were taxidermist animals in the house, including a full polar bear, including a full lion. And, 
and literally uh, we used a lot of visuals. I know you'll appreciate this. We created a book called Outside the Box and it's a book of just pictures of various homes that we've worked with the owner and we've repositioned the home from the contemporary home where we kind of decontemporized it to the taxidermist home. And I tell agents all the time, I teach agents that you know only 10% of buyers and 10% of agents can visualize. Said differently, 90% can only see the way the house it is the day you show it. So our job is to position a home so the vast majority of buyers and agents can visually see themselves moving in. Exactly. That's what it takes because you're, you hit the nail on the head. Buyers only know what they see, not the way it's going to be. They can't imagine. And I, I talked with a physicist one day down at Ber um, Stanford. Well, it was more than one day, but a couple of days uh -huh. in a special setting. And what do you do? He says, Barb. And so I'm telling him about staging and he's listening. He's so intent. And I was so happy he's listening. And he said, that makes perfect sense. You know, because I love physics. I'm an amateur for sure, but I love to really get into that and study it. And so, uh, he, you know, every everything you and I, we're all made up of the atoms and the chairs and the furniture and everything, and they're always in movement. And whether it's a chair or a desk, it's the combination it's in. But the desk and the chair and you and I, we're not even on the floor. We're hovering in a, a zone over the carpet it's the truth the physicists know this so he says to me that makes perfect sense because all those atoms are moving around with all that crap a he says and of course people can't see through it no wonder they get stressed and it was just so wonderful to have him have an aha about it hmm. it was so cool because this is the truth yeah that uh, that's truth. really cool so you, you mentioned you're speaking a lot in europe you know i've found um you know we're we're kind of spoiled here in the States. There's so many great resources, real estate boards, Facebook groups, uh, yeah. continuing education. You know, we helped uh, Keller Williams in Mexico launch their luxury division just pre-COVID, early March. And um, that's what one of the gentlemen said to me there is th that agents outside the United States are, are thirsty for information because they don't have the resources that we have here in the States. Are you finding the same thing? Right. It's uh, America is so uh, blessed and people have worked very, 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 very hard to create their businesses and to take us from the days of the pilgrim to where we are now. And yet, uh, and that's the truth. However, when we're in the other countries, it really helps us see, oh my gosh, how spoiled, may I say, and fortunate we are. And, you know, people that are very grateful in the U.S. are the ones that I see success have the most because gratefulness is what brings more success. And so, as I mentioned before, they're very hungry and who could blame them and in Europe and other places. And I invented staging here and went through those 13 years and longer it took from 72 when i would go through to get pat down in the what do you call it, airline lines uh -huh. all the way up to 2000 it was about 2007 and i'm not making that up god's my witness is that they would pat me down and i would say um because i have a uh, what do you call an artificial joint uh -huh. and so um I'd say, have you ever heard of something like staging? I made it a test and no, I never heard of that. What's that? That went all those years until about 2007, I'm walking through and getting pat down at um, Saratoga Bear by Long, Long Beach uh, in California. And I asked this gal, the lady, have you ever heard of staging? And she said, my sister did, did, just did that. And I thought, okay. It's come. It took That's all awesome. years. Yeah. And, and uh, seriously, to be, I say this humbly, to be the only person in the whole world that knew the word, because it had no meaning to other people except Broadway. And that's a stage. It. That's why I'm on the planet. That's why I'm here. It's my purpose. Well, you've, you've affected directly and indirectly thousands of lives. 
and I appreciate you for that. That's what we're trying to do with uh, this program and other programs that we've launched as well, really raise the bar. You know, uh, there's a lot of home sellers out there that need what you have to offer, need what we have to offer. And uh, there's unfortunately a lot of uh, people out there that, that don't continue to learn, aren't trying to get better. And so they might leave money on the table for the, the consumer directly or indirectly because that consumer's home isn't positioned properly. And that's really what we teach with our, our course and our trainings as well. And there's a lot of misconceptions out there when it comes to high-end and luxury real estate, Barb. And, and that's part of what we teach as well. I tell agents, grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, uh, where you might recommend or if there's a couple key takeaways for agents, whether it be resources or just ahas or, or something that a broker owner or a newer agent or maybe an agent that's not familiar with staging or HGTV, maybe they've had their head buried in the sand for a while. Um, do, do you have any, any resources, any recommendations? No problem. The first thing I really love you to do too is to go to my own website. Yep. BarbSchwarz.com. Okay. And it has my sayings on it, Michael, that you mentioned before. Yeah. Well, I, have, I haven't put all 150 on them, but I, I have the tech guy getting ready to put some more on. But I like the way that, um, I, you know, you have great intuition and knowledge, and I hope I do too. And I like to call it my inner knower, which is my inner intelligence that tells me things. And it just, it's like we listen too much to our brain, stop your thinking and change your life. Listen to the gift that links you with the divine universe because that's where that's coming from in your gut. It really is. And I'm into that. It's in a good, healthy way because you know, you will think of something, you and I and other people, and then it's like, well, I don't know if I should. And, and your gut or whatever you want to call it, intuition is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we push into the Berlin Wall instead of um, listening to that. And so I learned many years ago that that got me in trouble by not listening to it. And so as you listen to it, it gives you the wisdom of your connection with the divine or the universe, and it really works. And that's, that's how I came up with the idea to stage, the very same thing. And to, to name it staging because of my experience in plays. And so two things come to mind. My site is Barb Schwarz, and there's no T in my name. It's Schwarz like s'mores, <laughs> or, or, or Colin Powell, or, or the other guy, uh, Schwarzkopf. Sure, uh, sure. Dot com, B A R B. And I'm going to post that link, by the way. So I've already grabbed it, and so I'll post it to the various groups. Um, Here's one of the books I'd like them to read. Oh, we, very good. They can either get it at a library or um, purchase it, you know, on Amazon. Okay. This, this one is not just down market, so they're going to put it out again with any market because it's my whole program in this book. And I had three dialogues. One part of every chapter is with a seller why I do what I do. Another part is with the agent, why I recommend what I do. And the third part of each chapter is what I say to the stagers. So it's not about any down markets um, at all. And I, wanna, I hope you don't mind my showing you this. No, I please, this is great, thank you. I think you would like this. Um, this. This book is for building a business, but uh, a lot of realtors have also read it. This has been the number one book. Mm, building a successful home staging business. Okay. okay. And then this one, I think you'd enjoy 600 pages and 400 before and afters and 104 stories that I gave, that I asked for people all around the world. Oh my goodness. To submit. That's amazing. People love it. And the, that's the great. Phenomenal. So that's on Amazon. And okay. It's an educational tool is what it is. It's like a magazine. I mean, it's like a book you'd have on your coffee table, but. Staging the world, I love that. Yeah, I thank you, love. I, I'm really happy about how people have responded to that. And, and when, when did you, uh, when did these books come out approximately? 
This one, uh, just at the end of the year, last year, 2019. Oh, awesome. And um, then this one, sweetheart, I have to look. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm putting uh, you on a spot here. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this, the, this one, the one I just showed you is five stars, the stage in the world. This one is, uh, ooh, forgive me, let's see, 2007. Okay. And the others are the same time. And so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to look. I don't think I have it here, but I remember when I got licensed in, uh, uh, this isn't it, is it? No. When I got licensed as an agent in 2000, uh, I, I was at Cobalt Banker in Wheaton, Illinois, and I remember they, they had a, a staging book there, and it wasn't one of yours, but uh, that's when I first kind of heard about it. But uh, obviously, the more ingrained I got, so one of our modules, we have 16 modules uh, in our designation. One of them is staging and positioning. And so we talk uh, wholeheartedly about this. And so to have you on, um, it's, it's really great. Um, so if somebody wants to get a hold of you, Barb, what's the best way for them to do that? Well, thank you. They can write me a message on Facebook or, you know, on the, in the message area or just uh, on my site, there's a place to leave messages and they come straight to me. Perfect. Perfect. The very, the very first book I put out. Yes, um, let me see this. This goes way back and oh my gosh, people, people tease me, which I don't mind at all. Whoops, sorry, I had my foot in the wrong place. Um, Wait, hold that book up. Oh, uh, The Many Faces of Barb. So this was the first one in real estate and, okay. and staging is in there because okay. I was the first to write about it. And then this was the second one. Notice all the hair change in the first one. Oh my goodness. That's <laughs> great. That's great. And then this one's, uh, I think on Amazon too, with Jack Canfield and Stephen um, Covey. Covey. Yeah. So um, anyways, your heart, it's, oh. I'm, I'm here to help. I'd love to come on a, another time when you think that would be good to come back. Yeah. I have so, so much that I'd love to contribute. you got so much knowledge. So obviously under an hour doesn't do it any justice. But, uh, you know, I shared this in several groups. Uh, one group's got over 120,000 agents. And, um, you know, really appreciate what you've done for the industry. And we're hoping to continue to raise the bar. Everybody's always looking bar for, for this button, right? The easy button. But it, it right. doesn't exist. Right. And um, you really have to grow your knowledge. When you grow your knowledge, your confidence will grow. So uh, again, thank you for your 13 years of, of, you know, from 72 to 85 to really molding and tweaking and adapting. And uh, we, we've done the same thing. We launched our course officially, our designation in 2016. So uh, about four and a half years ago, but before we even launched it, we, we did a lot of testing and tweaking and modifying. And uh, we're always getting better, right? Uh, iron sharpens iron. Success is a journey, not a destination. So appreciate all you're doing. You and I will talk offline. I'll get you a copy of this uh, recording as well, Barb. And uh, make it a great Tuesday, everybody. Well, I want to put you on my site. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, bye. Bye.